Shark teeth are some of the most collected vertebrate fossils in the world. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes with incredible diversity. Because of this, shark teeth can be crucial in describing an extinct species, especially as cartilaginous skeletons don't often get preserved in the fossil record. Knowing the anatomy and features on a shark tooth is paramount for being able to identify a specimen to a taxa, but accurately describing and articulating the features on a tooth can be a daunting task. Today on Elasmocast, I'll be running through the most important characteristics in lingo that will equip you with the knowledge required for being able to identify and describe your shark teeth. Now before we get into the characteristics of a shark tooth, we need to be able to articulate where on the tooth a feature may be located. This is why it is imperative that we are able to understand the main views with which we can observe a tooth at. The primary view that collectors will often display their shark teeth in is the lingual view. While this is often referred to as the front of the tooth for display purposes, this is actually the back of the tooth, or the side of the tooth that faces towards the inside of the mouth. The flip side of the tooth, or the side that faces towards the outside of the mouth, is the labial view. An easy way I use to delineate between the two is to refer to my own mouth. The lingual side of my tooth faces my tongue, and the labial side faces my lip. In addition to these two views, we can also look at a tooth in other angles. If we were to look at a tooth from its base, we would be observing the tooth in basal view. If we were to look at the tooth from its tip, also referred to as the apex, we would be observing the tooth in apical view, which is also referred to as occlusal view. Lastly, we can observe a tooth from its side, which is referred to as its profile view. A profile view observed from the side of the tooth that faces towards the center of the jaw is called the mesial view, and the side that faces towards the back of the jaw is referred to as the distal view. Other terms that often get used to describe placement of characteristics on a tooth include median, which refers to the middle of the tooth, lateral, which refers to the sides of the tooth, and marginal, which refers to the edges of the tooth. Convexity and concavity are important terms to get used to as well. If something is convex, it curves outwards, and if something is concave, it curves inwards. Now that we can accurately describe where on a tooth a characteristic is located, let's go over some of the traits that a shark tooth may possess. Chondrichthyan teeth have two primary components, the tooth and the tooth base. The tooth's base is referred to as the root, and the root attaches the tooth to the gums and can be structured in many different ways. In many species of popularly collected shark teeth, such as Otodus obliquus, Peritotus benedini, and Carcarius taurus, to name a few, the root's lobes branch into two distinct segments. Teeth with this feature are referred to as being bilobed or bifurcated. Some shark species, such as the great white, have a hole in the center of the root on the tooth's lingual side. This is a vascular canal opening known as a foramen. Some other chondrichthians may have many of these openings, which are referred to in plural as foramina. Sand sharks, among others, have roots that feature a nutrient groove, also referred to as an axial furrow, which is a fold that goes down the center of the root. Nutrient grooves aren't restricted to the center of the root and can be numerous on a tooth. The toothy portion is referred to as the crown of the tooth. The outer shell covering the crown is known as enameloid, which is different in composition and structure than the true enamel found on our own teeth. The enameloid could be smooth or it could have folds, scientifically called crenulations or striations. A tooth of blade-like shape could have smooth cutting edges or cutting edges that are lined up with small denticles, aka serrations or serrae, as well as sometimes a combination of the two. Some teeth, such as the tiger shark, have complex serrations where even the serrations are serrated. A crown is usually composed of a principal or main cusp, which is often the median one, 
and can sometimes feature lateral cusp splits as well. On teeth without lateral cusp splits, the crown may instead form a lateral heel, where the crown attaches to the root on the basal ends of the tooth. When teeth are saw-like, as is the case for many cow shark teeth, their cusps are often referred to as cones, with the principal cone on the mesial side being called the acrocone. A feature on some shark teeth that is quite aesthetic is commonly called the burlette by collectors and the dental band by academics. This region sits in between the rest of the crown and the root, particularly on the lingual side. The tooth's neck is where the crown attaches to the root. On some more specialized teeth, such as on dogfish teeth, the lingual side of the crown can expand into the root in what is referred to as a uvula. Dogfish, among others, also have a labial crown expansion known as an apron. One last feature we'll touch on in this video is what is known as a visor, particularly common on ray teeth. A visor is a portion of the crown that overhangs the root. I hope you learned something new with this shark tooth anatomy crash course. If you enjoyed this content and want to learn more about anything and everything Chondrichthian, please help support the channel by liking, subscribing, and hit that notification bell. We'll catch you guys next time.